Mankind is living in a time of great change, comparable to the age of discovery 500 years ago. In recent decades, our concept of the age and the structure of the universe has undergone a drastic change. Moreover, new observations concerning the material foundation of reality have revolutionized our view of the world. Although new scientific thinking has proved that the relativity of time and the external order of events have lost their rationale, people today find it difficult to relinquish their concept of reality, which is shrouded in the mists of time. Today, science is constructing patterns of reality consisting of more than 20 dimensions, where countless parallel worlds coexist. The multidisciplinary approach is leading the way to a new view of reality, where the place of man's innermost being is outside our familiar three-dimensional world. More and more people have come to the conclusion that our Western culture has lived under an illusion for more than 2,000 years. As a futurist and UFO researcher, I have uh, drawn the conclusion that the fact of human alien contact at this time on planet Earth is probably the least understood and least recognized major force that will shape the future of the human species during the 21st century and beyond. I do believe that not only are we being impacted by alien intelligence at this time, I believe we have probably been impacted throughout the entire history of human culture. It is even possible, though certainly not proven, that uh, some sort of uh, extraterrestrial or non-human intelligence uh, was present at the very birth of our species. Whether or not we are a genetic experiment, uh, whether we are someone else's test tube baby, as it were, or whether we have some other kind of relationship with these beings, I do think that eventually we will understand that our relationship to beings from other worlds or other zones of reality goes back to the very beginning of our sense of time. I think that's going to be one of the most extraordinary and perhaps devastating discoveries in all of human history. Devastating not in the sense of bad, in fact it may turn out to be very good, but certainly devastating in terms of what it does to what we currently believe. It's going to change practically everything that we call science. It's certainly going to change an awful lot of what we call history. It certainly may impact uh, our religions, and by that I mean religions literally all over the world. What we're going to learn is that intelligence comes in every conceivable shape and size and form. And I think some people may be afraid that that is going to literally destroy our sense of spirituality or our relationship to God. In my opinion, it will do exactly the opposite, that as we discover just how extraordinarily broad and wondrous is the scope of intelligence in our universe, it can only heighten our sense of awe and our sense of uh, 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 feeling connected to uh, this extraordinary beingness, whatever it may be, call it God, call it the One, call it uh, the universal mind that is capable of bringing this incredible reality uh, into our reality. So I don't have any trouble believing that religion will survive, certainly human spirituality will survive, but we will discover that practically everything we know is wrong, and that actually uh, reality is a lot more amazing than we thought. A great variety of relics from ancient civilizations have been found in different parts of the world. In recent decades, scientists have adopted a new approach in studying them. Could they be interpreted as evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations? Even today, mysteries abound. The crop circles found all over the world puzzle scientists. British scientist Terence Meaden's theory of plasma vortex has found support as a possible solution to the mystery. To this day, I have no firm, 
conclusions as to what the circles are. Um, certainly, a significant proportion of the circles are man-made, especially, especially in the last two or three years, when there have been many man-made fakes. But there is a genuine phenomenon. That, that is something of which I have no doubt. And the nature of it becomes extremely difficult to describe and to define. Circles have a certain elusive quality, and we've conducted um, a large number of surveillance experiments trying to catch circles forming on film. And we've never been entirely successful in this endeavor. Um, people have seen circles form. Uh, there are several cases where people have actually witnessed a circle form. Uh, and in every case, there has been no visible agency. The crop is laid down, rather like a, a fan opening up. And this usually happens very rapidly, within five to 10 seconds. And they've only been observed in the case of simple circles, single circles. Also, there have been a, a large number of the uh, appearances of circles have been associated with lights in the sky, strange lights in the sky, what we call UFOs, obviously. Although the number of cases where lights have been descending, seen descending into a field and circles have appeared on that very night has been quite limited. Usually circles appear with no visible agency, whatever, and um, they're just found, usually um, the next day, but sometimes not for several days or even weeks. From 1988, uh, through until 1991, there was a great development in the circles in England. And we got many extraordinary and articulate shapes. The circles seemed to evolve from the early plane circles and ring circles into something far more complex. And among those, um, among those circles in those years, there were many mystical signs, or even, I should say, religious signs. Uh, there, were, there was a profusion of crosses, uh, Celtic crosses, and uh, Roman crosses, things of this kind, which were very, very clearly symbolic. And I think these had quite a striking effect on many people. We have had some striking cases of uh, UFOs in, in the areas where the circles have been forming. And last year, we had even, even a case of where a number of people saw what appeared to be a structured craft, um, which uh, on, on, the, on the following day, a circle was found in just the place where it had been seen. That was just a simple vertical circle rather than a picture frame. One of the creatures which has boggled me for the countless months and years is that what is really doing the crop circles and what are they really about? I have been allowed to videotape and also take a photograph of a creature which I, I term as being an invisible flying predator. I will now show you a picture of the creature which is now making the crop circles at an amazing speed of under three minutes flat. This is the invisible flying predator. This is alien species able to fly on the magnetic lines of gravity. It has intelligence of a superior nature. It's, it feeds upon the biological energies of a silicon type material which uh, corn, wheat fields, and barley fields have. This creature travels in groups and flocks. It also makes the chirping or other sounds which have been recorded by such top uh, researchers as Colin Andrews and, uh, and a host of others. It has the ability to make itself invisible and not be seen, and yet it will give off uh, a glow. It cannot be photographed unless it can be tr trusted by a person of my statue who can allow the creature to come forth and make himself visible. They have said that the crop circles are not messages for us. But for those extraterrestrial races that are here, who are not invited here, who are manipulating mankind for their own reasons, to radically shift their behavior immediately or else. I 
I am a contactee, and I've been allowed to come before you at this time to, to relate to you some very important information, which I think the world should know at this particular time. My first initial experience started at the age of five years of age in a place called Wilson County, Texas, in the state of Texas. And I was taken aboard an alien spacecraft and confronted by alien beings, which were of a very high benevolent state. They were your typical Nordics, with the very deep blue eyes, platinum hair, and dressed in very fine white hair clothing. Uh, I was taken aboard their jello craft, as they called it, out into deep space for a period of four hours aboard a giant mothership, which I was later told, which was approximately 14 miles in diameter, if you can picture such a craft. When Percy Galloway was heading for Vietnam aboard the warship USS Walker in the late 1960s, the ship's crew one day saw a huge UFO hovering above them. The case was immediately classified top secret, something that Galloway believes is a blatant example of the concealment policy that the US authorities engaged in the name of national security. The top secret classification gave Galloway the opportunity to make personal observations on how the US government used Vietnam as a testing ground for military technology and genetic experimentation. Claims about secret contracts between the US authorities and aliens were most likely pure fantasy. It was a pretext which allowed the CIA to carry out its own radiation experiments on pregnant women and five-year-old children. It would seem very odd if some super-intelligent civilization needed agreement to conduct its own cross-breeding experiments. This conflicting picture is confirmed by what Galloway heard from an alien. Among some of those encounters that he portrayed to me, he said, one, our government has basically lied to the public countless times and they have such incredible secrets that they, they do not wish to relate to the general public because in the interest of nat national security, as they always portray this, that they cannot reveal this secret, not ever. And they are so deep in uh, controversial black COVID uh, projects that it's now impossible that they can ever come forward and tell the general public or any nation that they have such incredible technologies and spacecraft as, as, as well as live and dead aliens. But beyond those points, my basic encounter with this entity is that he wished for me to portray myself as a spokesperson or ambassador to, to tell the people of this planet that they, in, in fact, mean us no harm. What they do is for strictly to in, uh, do biological engineering to, in effect, to try and save their own planet. And they have tried many times to come forward, but our government has said no they are not allowed to expose themselves to the general public. And in fact, with the abduction scenario and various things that are now taking place on this planet, they have come to the conclusion that they no longer need us for abduction experiments. They have gotten more than their share of all the uh, hybrid eggs and so forth. They can be totally self-sufficient. But the problem being is that they cannot, at this particular time, leave our planet due to the fact that they have overstayed their stay, and they now have entanglement with the uh, reptilian race, who also are here and claiming to be their superior masters from another star system, which that is uh, from the uh, Bell Tracks and Orion system. Many believe that the hybridization experiments should be condemned because they are unethical. UFO researchers answer this accusation by saying that millions of abortions are carried out every year in the world. What is their ethical basis? Robin Quayle has examined over 600 encounters between humans and humanoids. On the basis of her research, the overall picture of this interaction is not as gloomy as it might first appear. In 1979, during a session where a client was in a very deep trance, he suddenly got up off the couch, walked outside, and there was a UFO over my house hovering down at treetop level. There were three of us outside observing this phenomenon. 
person in trance was experiencing a very high fever and a case, a very raging case of infectious hepatitis. Uh, this contact seemed to cure his ailment completely because the next morning he was completely free of any symptoms or of any fever. The regression bringing the trauma to the surface actually releases the fear in most cases. And one of the most beneficial side effects that I have noticed across the board with almost all abductees is that they become very psychic. The sensitivities are very heightened and they're very, very spiritually aware. And so even if the encounter seemed to have a negative effect in the beginning and seemed to be terrifying or painful or frightening, the after effects in the long run seem to leave them with a much expanded sense of consciousness, able to be telepathic, to know about the future. Many get very advanced information about the future. Many begin to channel. And so perhaps, uh, there are ways to even engender this kind of contact. Uh, C. Sopaz Wells from Peru is the contactee who says that he was taken to another planet for a few days. And afterwards, he, has, he was left totally, totally transformed, totally telepathic, totally clairvoyant, able to see into the future, able to almost have contact at will. So overall, I can't say that the phenomena as a whole is negative at all. And of course, the prodigies that I spoke about earlier are an incredible group of people. And uh, the possibilities of what is coming out of their contact and their channeling and their experience is, is just unlimited. It's infinite possibilities of what we're doing. I consider myself an interdisciplinary researcher trying to embrace a number of different disciplines to look at any individual phenomenon. I'm also co-director of a new parapsychology program at Rutgers, uh, at, at Rosebridge Graduate School of Integrative Psychology in California. And we are trying to look at the tradition of parapsychology, which usually has three main components, the study of ectocentric perception, the study of psychokinesis, and the study of survival phenomenon, survival of physical death, and mediumship as it used to be called. We also want to include parapsychology to, uh, to investigate uh, ufology, or extra, uh, unidentified flying objects and extraterrestrial uh, studies. I'm interested in including in parapsychology and in what used to be called survival research, ufology, and particularly the channeling component in ufology, where people today are purporting to have telepathic communication from beings who identify themselves as uh, not only from other planets, therefore being extraterrestrial, but from other levels of reality, meaning, to satisfy my definition of channeling, they do not currently exist on the physical level of reality as we understand it, but they, under, they exist on some other vibratory or frequency domain, some other octave of, of existence. And yet they are able to telepathically communicate with a certain people uh, who are in the physical body as human beings today, called a channel, or called contactees who have had physical contact and then later or before or in between such physical contacts claim to have mental or telepathic or channeling-like contact with these sources. When I hear the telepathic communication, or when I receive the telepathic communication, it's not one word after another, and it's not any kind of audible sound. It's as if somebody was taking um, a syringe and injecting instant knowledge in my head. Maybe a total huge concept in a split second of time. And then I try to translate it into our language that, that I can understand and that others can understand. Leah Haley has encountered aliens from five different races of humanoids, sometimes in her home, sometimes on their vessels. She's taken into the UFO along a bridge of light where the aliens teach her, mainly using telepathy. During this process, the information will be stored in her subconscious 
from where it will later surface at a time the aliens choose. I remember the, this asking this woman, where are your people from? And she said to me, the Pleiades, but you already knew that. I only remember that she told me responsible for monitoring the world situations, that her people were were there to make sure that that the world was operating okay. And they did not usually intervene in world affairs, but they did when necessary. And she gave me an example of that. She told me that her people were responsible for stopping total world destruction when the German leader was in control. And then she went on. At one point, she called him one of the Antichrists. If you extend physics so that you can talk in physics-like terms about the way extraterrestrials as sources that claim to be channeled are where they exist, how their level of reality relates to our physical level of reality with three dimensions of space and one of time and current energy and uh, matter relations as physics currently understands them, then we're left with a quandary of how these beings, let's say they claim to be from Centaurus or Andromeda or the Pleiades or from Mars or Venus even, but not the physical level of Mars or Venus, from more like an astral or an etheric or higher vibratory frequency domain of it, how do they communicate with us? What we're learning in our research and in interrogating the sources themselves is that the mind plane, the mental plane, is the same whether you have a physical body or not. If you are a astral level or let's say 10, 100, 800,000 cycles a second carrier wave you exist upon as a Venusian, shall we say, and you are mentally communicating this moment with me, and I am clairaudiently hearing it in my mind's ear, or telepathically picking up the thought forms from you as a Venusian, shall we say, it is, it, the communication is allowed because there is a mental plane that runs throughout the known universe on which thoughts move much, much faster than the speed of light. They move at thought speed, which may be near instantaneous. So there is a certain communication stratum and glue that holds together all sentient beings, whether they have physical bodies or not, whether they are, are human or not, um, whatever level of evolution they may be on, we all have some kind of a higher vibratory mental domain that we can make waves on that, on that stratum of reality and communicate with each other just the way on this physical level of reality, I can make air waves that, that reach your eardrum and then therefore go into your brain. All this is to say that our, our research and our conjecture is, is, is leading us to the understanding that there are other levels of reality on which waves, so to speak, can be made that are not limited by the speed of light and that are not understood by current physics and through which various kinds of communications can occur and also by means of which uh, spaceships or what we call UFOs today can move in what we might call hyperspace or higher frequency domains, non-spatio-temporal uh, realms that they can move in and out of. So I see understanding how extraterrestrial vessels work, how they can come from so many light years away so quickly. On November 20th, 1989, a Russian plane on a scheduled flight was approaching its destination in the Stavropol area when at exactly one o'clock in the morning, the crew informed air traffic control that they'd observed several unidentified objects ahead of them at a distance of about 150 kilometers from the airport. One of them began to approach the aircraft, pointing a dazzling light at it. Suddenly the object changed direction and disappeared into the night. One minute later, it was seen above the runway at a height of 200 meters. The oval-shaped object lit the darkness with a bright blue ray behind which spread a fiery glow. A minute and a half later, the object disappeared northeast. Russian UFO research has recorded many similar observations. Initially, the object of the research was purely military. Gradually, the Russians have come to accept UFO research much more readily than the Western world, particularly as the observations have often been accompanied by parascientific phenomena. In 1993, there were relatively few UFO sightings in Russia. After the busy period in the late 1980s, a quieter period began. However, last month, 
Many people saw UFOs above St. Petersburg. Some were bright, globe-like, others were like saucers, blinking. For instance, on August the 12th, 1993, at 3 a.m., three points of light were sighted above Vasily Island, St. Petersburg. They were hovering in a triangular formation. The phenomenon moved slowly over downtown and then away from the city. Naturally, numerous people saw it. An interesting thing is, round holes appeared in the windows of houses. The cuts were even, not melted or anything like that, as if a round piece of the glass had been removed by a cutter. Scientists are still studying the case. Russians are studying ufology more seriously nowadays than in the previous years. Most of the important researchers look into it. There are physicists, biologists, and other natural scientists. UFO research has also provided the Russians with material to study other than PSI phenomena. It's led them to look at the structure of the universe and the ultimate purpose of life from new angles. Earlier, during the period of communist ideological enforcement, only dialectical materialism was accepted as the platform for explaining reality. Now the old empire is dead, and the Demidov Cemetery is the symbol of its collapse. It's the last resting place for people oppressed under Soviet rule, who could have paved the way for freedom and pluralism had they been given a chance. Today, the winds of change are blowing. There are new forces in the forefront of scientific thinking, for whom matter no longer is the basic element of reality. On the basis of discoveries made in quantum physics, scientists have realized that awareness creates the material world around us. UFOs and paranormal phenomena fit well into such a concept of reality. I happened to sight a UFO in Moscow in 1979. I was deeply impressed by this incident. Afterwards, I experienced strange poltergeist-like phenomena. These experiences inspired me to study reality that appears as such strange phenomena. I'll tell you about an amazing UFO experience some pilots had. Our AN-14 plane was flying above Cheetah in 1983. The plane had an observation turret on its side. The flight mechanic was sitting in it. A light point appeared far away, and it flew towards the plane very fast and surrounded it with enormous white matter. Frightened, the flight mechanic jumped into the cockpit. The situation was alarming. They were about to land the plane. They were only at 2,400 meters and descending. But they had to take her higher because there were hills ahead. For 15 minutes, they tried desperately to free the plane, but to no avail. Then the matter took off and disappeared. Once in Cheetah, the crew was told that a plane had disappeared near there an hour ago, carrying a lot of passengers. Now we know something about the phenomenon. We're surrounded by a huge universe.
We don't know its boundaries. The area known to astronomers is 30 billion light years wide, an immense vastness. Radiation seen as light has a wavelength of 400 to 700 nanometers, that is, from violet to red. We only see a fragment of electromagnetic radiation. The space we can see is 30 billion light years wide. Light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second. Light travels through that area in 30 billion years. The space surrounding us is immense. Let's say the speed of light would change to, say, 10 meters per second. What would happen then? Light wouldn't travel from the sun in eight minutes, but in millenniums. Actually, people wouldn't even see each other. What if the mass or the charge of an electron were to change? The atom we know now would disappear, and matter would turn to something we could no longer sense. The world would change into something completely different. Worlds with different material structures exist parallel to ours. We can't understand the physical laws of these worlds. Are UFOs time machines which reverse the force of gravity by creating a time difference between the center of the craft and its outside edge? The extremely strange manner in which they act would indicate this. In August 1987, the military authorities apprehended an alien craft near the Finnish border. The cockpit was so small that it obviously could not have been designed for a human being. In Karelia, near Vyborg, there was an object that was to be carried on an army plane to Kola, to Monjegorsk. It was at a military air base, hidden in a fighter hangar. I have drawn it as the soldiers described it. The object was some 12 meters long. They say it was very heavy and of golden color. I've made a sketch of it here. At the end of September, the carefully guarded spacecraft, which resembled a large artillery shell, inexplicably disappeared during the investigations. For the UFO researchers, accounts such as these received from military intelligence sources make most interesting reading. Two elliptical UFOs are photographed above the Moscow Space Research Center. Suddenly, a powerful light floods out of one of them, and they both speed away with a hissing sound a few moments later. Why is there so little public information about such incidents? Alexei Dmitriev, a doctor of geology, believes that political leaders censor and distort information about UFOs. Finland shares a 1,000 kilometer border and 100 years of history with Russia. UFOs have been commonplace throughout Scandinavia since the Second World War. And as in Russia, interest has spread from the UFOs to PSI phenomena. People in Finland too have had encounters with aliens in their bedrooms or elsewhere, just like people in other parts of the world. Huoneeni oli, oli tällaisessa vaaleanpunaisen usvan peitossa ja katsoin tarkasti, että missä olen. Ja näin oman lampun sänkyn yläpuolella ja totesin, että olen, olen omassa huoneessani. Mutta se, mikä minusta tuntui hirveän oudolta, oli se, että olin sängyssäni, mutta en osannut sanoa missä asennossa. En tuntenut jalkojani, en tuntenut käsiäni. Olin kuin lamaantuneena siihen. Olin hyvin, hyvin kevyenä paikalla, mutta kumminkin olin sängyssä ja peitto oli päälläni. Niin en pystynyt liikkumaan yhtään. Ainoastaan silmät vähän liikkuivat. 
Sitten näin vasemmalla puolella niin sänkyni vieressä tällaisia pienikokoisia vaaleita hahmoja. Katsoin tarkempaan, että heillä oli vähän uurteiset kasvot ja en pelännyt niitä kumminkaan. Ajattelin sillä tavalla, että kiva, tästähän alkaa seikkailu, että mihin mennään. Olin valmis lähtemään heidän mukaansa. Nämä olennot näkivät, mitä ajattelin ja heillä tuli sellainen ystävällinen virne kasvoille ja näin, että yksi heistä otti tällaisen ruutuvihon ja kynän ja sanoivat, että kirjoita. Minä epäröin, että mitä minä kirjoittaisin ja kenelle minä kirjoittaisin, mutta he käskivät vain kirjoittaa. Minä kirjoitin, minä kirjoitin Juhalle. Ja tämä on ensimmäinen kerta, kun minä kerron näistä asioista näin paljon. Encounters with extraterrestrials have also been given mundane explanations. Scientists talk about multiple personalities, partial personalities, activation of archetypal energy, and epilepsy of the temporal lobe. These explanations cannot eliminate the psychological depth of the experiences. Kalevi Rikonen is a Finnish example of the opening of the spiritual world through UFO experiences. What changed his life was a journey through autumnal Finland, which evolved into a typical abduction, during which Rikonen was taken aboard a UFO while still in his car. There was something wrong with my car. The engine kept stalling, the lights kept fading and brightening, the tape recorder didn't work, and my body functions went out. I couldn't control my body, even though my mind worked. I knew they were aliens. I let them know that I'm an unnecessary risk to them. Then my consciousness was turned off. The next thing I remember happened the next day. I woke up 60 kilometers from there almost 24 hours later in my bed. First, I thought it was a dream. How could it be possible? On closer look, I realized the color of my car had paled considerably, as if the sun had burned to the car's paint. Almost a full tank of gas had been consumed. Although messages from invisible worlds often seem to transcend the boundaries of human intelligence, we must look at the experiences which are known as channeling. The intensity of the experience may lead to accidental generalizations, and the imagination may color the account of it, which means that its significance becomes overemphasized. What is interesting about channeled information is that it exudes absolute authority, poignancy, and wisdom. It's probable that the person conveying the message does not necessarily know what is happening. Aliens evolve just like we do. Different beings that have contacted me very considerably. Different sizes, appearances, and other internal structures. Some of them can move by willpower, some distance in space. Others need spacecraft, just like we need means of transportation. These energy beings can use their willpower and gravitation control. They can connect their shielding fields and life circuits with the circuits of the universe. These normal space people can resemble us quite a lot, or then be totally different from us. The closer their race is to ours, the easier it is for them to operate among us. The Bible tells about new, different people who lived among them. Most likely, 
they were aliens, sons of God wandering among the people. As in all countries of the world, Finland too has a great number of mediumistic painters, musicians, composers, and other artists who are convinced that their art derives from inspiration from invisible worlds. Skeptics offer the artist's own subconscious as an explanation, although most parapsychologists consider these phenomena a mystery. Mediumistic production is often characterized by uncommon energy and an intensity of expression, but also a certain narrowness. Many mediumistic people also claim to have healing skills. Psychosociological study has proved that they are clearly more intelligent and better balanced than the average. The Finnish medium, Aulikki Plami, is an excellent example of a mediumistic singer. Those performing through her include Carmen, who died at the age of 16, as well as many famous singers long dead, for example, Enrico Caruso, Elvis Presley, and Louis Armstrong. A healer who introduces himself as Dr. Herman also works through Plami. In continental Europe in particular, Plami has become a sensation. Mediumistic individuals often convey messages predicting the end of the world, and it's clear that the number of major catastrophes is growing. Another frequent theme is mass evacuation carried out by UFOs, which easily brings to mind the ascensions mentioned in the Bible. The telepathic experiences of mediumistically gifted individuals are generally extremely strong. Sometimes they appear as journeys from which mental images remain in the memory. Research has shown that channeling experiences have some links with multiple personalities, although distinct differences also occur. While three out of four people with multiple personalities develop the personas of under 12, children never occur in channeling. Usually, multiple personalities emerge from the subconscious by the score, whereas in channeling, there is seldom more than one source. Mediumistic individuals are often sensitive and emotionally strong people. Often the sources they channel display very distinctive characteristics. They are masters, leaders, or captains of spacecraft. Viewed from the point of view of multiple personality theory, it could be said that a strong emotional charge feeds the fantasy of the mediums and leads them further into the world of fantasy. This may ultimately lead to contradictions. The critics, however, disregard one important background factor. The educational level of channelers is often so significantly low that they couldn't possibly invent the matters that they convey to the world. Investigators of channeling have also suggested that there's no need to rely on the multiple personality theory or any parapsychic explanation to understand the phenomenon. They believe that it could simply be a matter of exceptional talent. Artistic talent often bursts forth so unexpectedly and so phenomenally that there's a great temptation to interpret it as the activation of a reincarnation memory. <laughs> Undoubtedly, the most common form of channeled communication is literary channeling, better known as automatic writing. Without or partly without a person's conscious knowledge, sometimes also when fully conscious, the medium's hand produces text. Today, computers too can be used for writing. Psychologists claim that this kind of automatism may lead to disorders of the mind, such as the emergence of mutually independent personality units. People who have this type of experience seem, however, to be in closer contact with the universe than the rest of us. Automaattikirjoitus on mielenkiintoinen ilmiö. Sillä tarkoitetaan sitä, että ihminen ottaa kynän käteensä ja hän tuntee yhtäkkiä jonkun ulkopuolisen energian vievän tätä kynää ja kirjoittavan. 
on ihmisiä, jotka kirjoittavat kielillä, joita he eivät päivätajumassa ole koskaan opiskelleet. Ja tämä informaatio, joka saadaan, näyttää antavan tietoa siitä, minkälaista elämä on kuoleman rajan jälkeen. On hyvin mielenkiintoista, että jotkut automaattikirjoittajat ovat saaneet osan tiedoista ja joku toinen toisella paikkakunnalla toisen tiedon. Ja kun nämä tiedot yhdistetään, niin silloin siitä tulee vasta looginen tarina. Luonnollisesti nykyaikainen lääketiede sanoo, että automaattikirjoitus tulee ihmisen alitajunnasta. Ja fundamentalistit valitettavasti väittävät sen olevan paholaisen toimia. Itse, joka olen myös lääkäri ja automaattikirjoittaja, totean vain, että aivan varmasti tämä kirjoitus ei tule omasta alitajunnasta, vaan se tulee ulkopuolelta. Ja kun tällä tavalla voi olla yhteydessä toisiin dimensioihin, olivatpa ne sitten kuoleman jälkeisiä tai avaruuden muita dimensioita, olentoja muilta planeetoilta, meillä on mahdollisuus saada erinomaisesti uutta tietoa, jopa teknistä tietoa. Kun ihminen joutuu psyykkisten dimensioiden kanssa tekemisiin, hänen maailmankuvansa muuttuu radikaalisti. Esimerkiksi eräs ystäväni Norjassa, rocktähti Jannike, tapasi ufoja ja humanoideja omalla rannallaan. Kun hän joutui tilanteeseen, että hän joutui asettamaan maailmankuvansa aivan uuteen valoon, kun nämä humanoidit ottivat yhteyttä ja olivat vain parin metrin päässä hänestä, koko hänen maailmankuvansa muuttui. Ja sen seurauksena hämmästyttävästi tällainen rocktähti alkoi tehdä sanoitusta ja laulaa maailman pelastamisesta, sademetsistä, ihmisenä olemisesta, elämän jatkuvuudesta. Kaikki ihmiset, jotka joutuvat ufojen ja humanoidien kanssa tekemisiin, taikka kuolleiden kanssa tekemisiin, joutuvat asettamaan maailmankuvansa uuteen asentoon. awakening, I hope it isn't too rude an awakening, to a shift in our consensus reality, that our shared lived experience is changing, it's changing, and we are realizing that, that uh, there's a higher dimensionality interfused with this dimensionality, that we need to give more um, credibility to those realms we used to think of as, as not real or unreal or less real, like the subjective, the mental, the imaginational, the love, the desire. So the second Copernican revolution, as I would see it, that we are in the midst of right now, is we're going to have to have the root awakening to reverse the figure ground field, just in the way Galileo attempted to do it centuries ago, where we had to agree that the, finally, after some torture and fighting, that it, that, that it was the sun going around, uh, that there was the earth going around the sun, not the sun going around the earth. So everything doesn't go around dead physical matter as, as the highest reality. And that is what I believe most of the the most evolved extraterrestrial sources and, and the most, uh, the most um, uh, evolved of the channeled sources, as well as our own higher selves. We're entities, we just happen to have bodies. We shouldn't demote ourselves in the face of extraterrestrials or, or, or channeled sources that don't have physical bodies. Good heavens, just because we have bodies doesn't mean we have no less wisdom or no less access to universal mind and truth and heart. But you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Perfection cannot be transmitted to a human being through any channel. It has to be found within oneself. The wages of imperfection is death, and the pain of knowing this is the burden mankind has to carry in his subconscious, although there are many hints about the real nature of death. Kuolemarajakokemukset on yksi testausmuoto, jolla ihmistä opetetaan näkemään, mikä hän itse asiassa on. Kuolemarajakokemuksilla tarkoitetaan sitä, jolloin Ihminen kriisitilanteessa, esimerkiksi auto-onnettomuudessa, hukkumisonnettomuudessa yhtäkkiä menee tajuttomaksi, jossakin tapauksessa jopa sydän pysähdykseen saakka, ja hänen tajuntansa irtoaa ruumiista. Hän pystyy kuitenkin hämmästyttävästi näkemään ja observoimaan kaikki asiat ympärillään. Hän pystyy pikkutarkasti näkemään elvytystoimenpiteet, kuulemaan ihmisten puheet, ja kuitenkin hän näkee yläpuolelta oman ruumiinsa. Tässä tilanteessa hänelle tulee myös sisäinen voimakas kokemus. Hän tuntee menevänsä tunneliin, kohtaa suuren valkoisen valon, joka sitten riippuen hänen uskonnollisesta taustastaan tulkataan Jeesushahmoksi tai yleensä Kristushahmoksi, Mariaksi tai Buddhaksi vastaavaksi. Ja hänelle sanotaan, että hänen aikansa ei ole vielä tullut. Hänen täytyy palata suorittamaan se tehtävä, mitä varten hän on maaplaneetalle tällä kertaa syntynyt. Kuolemarajakokemus on mielestäni eräänlainen vihkimys. 
paranormaaleihin ilmiöihin ja erikoisesti UFO-dimensioihin. Koska sen jälkeen, kun ihminen on todennut olevansa energia, tajunta eikä suinkaan fyysinen ruumis, hän myöskin ymmärtää, että hän voi helpommin olla yhteydessä eri dimensioihin, joilla myöskin ufot liikkuvat. Ja mielenkiintoista ovat jälkiseuraukset. UFO-kontakteissa ja kuolemarajakokemus- ja ruumista poistumisilmiökontakteissa ja niiden jälkeen jälkiseuraukset ihmiselle ovat samat. Hän kiinnostuu yhtäkkiä ekologisesti maapallon pelastamisesta. Hän kiinnostuu delfiineistä ja valaista, jotka ovat älyllisiä olentoja, eivätkä suinkaan mitään eläimiä. Nehän jakavat tämän maaplaneetan meidän kanssamme. He ovat vastuussa järvistä ja vesistöistä, meristä ja me olemme maasta. Tällainen henkilö kiinnostuu myöskin paranormaaleista ilmiöistä yleensä. Hänestä tulee telepaattinen. Hän saa selvänäkö flashejä ja koko hänen persoonallisuutensa muuttuu siinä määrin, että hän tajuaa olevansa ikuinen energia, joka jopa samanaikaisesti on olemassa useilla eri dimensioilla. The large size of a dolphin's brain in proportion to its body is regarded as a sign of advanced intelligence. The dolphin can produce sounds in four different ways simultaneously and thus keep in contact with other dolphins. Scientists who study whales and dolphins also believe that they use telepathy to communicate. There are many touching stories about the relationship between dolphins and humans. Dolphins can sense the presence of a pregnant woman in the water and have succeeded in making autistic children speak. Many people have a strong feeling of affinity with dolphins and claim that the dolphins have helped them become aware of their psychic abilities and of their former lives going back thousands of years to the legendary city of Atlantis. Atlantiksen aikaan tutkin delfiinien ja kosmoksen välistä kommunikointia ja myös tässä elämässä olen yhteydessä kosmokseen. Olen ottanut viestejä vastaan automaattikirjoituksella helmikuusta 1989 lähtien. Parhaimmillaan tämä kanavointi on kestänyt jopa kaksi tuntia ilman minkäännäköistä tietoa siitä, mitä seuraavien sanojen jälkeen kirjoitan. Luen katkelman tästä teoksesta, jossa korostetaan ennen kaikkea tätä kriittisyyttä. Tässä on monia mahdollisuuksia joutua itse harhaan, sillä te maan ihmiset olette vielä niin alussa näissä yhteyksissä, että olette kiinnostuneita kritiikittömästi kaikesta siitä, mikä tulee teille näkymättömiltä tasoilta, tai sitten te yksinkertaisesti haluatte kieltää kaiken. Te ette luota maan päällä kehen tahansa, ja se on oikein, sillä teidän tulee itsenäisesti viedä elämäänne eteenpäin. Ystävät ja muut kanssaihmiset ovat teille kuitenkin tarpeen, sillä heidän kauttaan te opitte tuntemaan itseänne, te opitte ymmärtämään omaa ihmisyyttänne ja omia mahdollisuuksianne. Samoin teidän tulee yhteyksissänne henkitasojen kanssa oppia ymmärtämään, milloin olette tekemisissä luotettavien, teitä laajemman ymmärryksen omaavien tasojen kanssa, jotka voivat teitä opastaa. Teidän tulee tämä oppia itse, joten älkää pelätkö näitä yhteyksiä. Te opitte vain menemällä mukaan yhteyksiin, mutta kun osaatte alusta asti olla kriittisiä, selviätte ilman turhia harhautuksia. Teidän todellakin tulee tämäkin asia läpikäydä, sillä se on yksi osa teidän henkistä kasvua.